Well, good morning. Yes. We are standing here today in the community for the community of Providence, representing family, students, legislators, community organizations, and other community members. We are here to express our concerns about what has been going on during the takeover of PPSD. Due to the poor performance of the state intervention and recent allegations against the superintendent's senior advisor, the community, us, are here today with all of you. We have a few things that we would like to ask of PPSD. We want the immediate resignation of Providence Public Schools senior advisor. So the senior advisor to the superintendent's office. We want the Providence delegation to bring an end to the Providence Public Schools state intervention beginning September of 2023. Removal of powers for the Rhode Island State Education Commissioner under the Providence takeover upon return to legislative session January of 2023. We're asking a special Senate Oversight Committee hearing to discuss the overall status of the takeover and recent allegations into the Providence Superintendent's senior advisor. We're also asking an independent investigation regarding potential graduation inflation occurring at PPSD. And we're also asking for an independent audit of the metrics outcome of the takeover. And let me just say, on my way here today, a parent had sent me a text message and that parent stated that she was glad we were on the forefront regarding education in Providence because she said she knows that the fight is hard. Parents have not given up. It has seemed as though parents have given up. But she said PPSD does an amazing job of pushing parents and anyone concerned about our young people out of the public school. That's why we are here. We are here to represent those who may not be able to speak and some of them who don't even know they should speak. I am Pilar McLeod, but let me introduce my brother, Gary Danzler, who is gonna say a few words. Thank you, Pilar. Um, she's absolutely right. We talk about education in black and brown communities. It's really saddened that we have to go to the extreme to get the attention of the media. And what happens is that in the black and brown community, especially our young kids, they are not listening to us, right? So now all the black and brown co community leaders gotta come out and talk about what's, what's not what's happening. We need to protect our young black and brown kids for the future of Rhode Island. This is very imperative that we stand behind these schools and understand what's going on. So thank you. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Did anyone else have anything they want to say? Good morning, everyone. I'm Dwayne Keyes, longtime Providence resident and Southside community advocate. One of my own sayings I've said is racism is not something we can disagree on and still be friends. Well, in this case, racism is not something you can perform at your job and still be employed. The info that has been released, that's been said, has been very clear in terms of what is going on. There's no need for any more discussion, any more investigation, any more looking into it. All those who are protecting the senior advisor or who are ignoring what is being released are all contributing to that racism and white supremacy that's showing up in this situation. Let me touch on the independent investigation evaluation that Mr. McLeod said was much needed. In situations like this, you want someone or the process to be objective. You don't want any question for any um, statements of, oh, there was cover up or it was rigged, right. Right. or there was something that was sinister that was done. You want someone else to validate the truth. Not someone who has no skin in the game. You want that independent point of view involved in that investigation evaluation. I also want to call out why it's important that we need to look at the commissioner. 2021, we had a similar situation. We were over here, though. We had a different superintendent with a staff member that led to that staff member no longer being here and that superintendent no longer being here. And I'm like, wow, we're going to another situation. Right. So what's going on with the hiring and selection process? What's happening in that, that process at that level of and why? Right. And that council as well. 
that now is needs to be called into question, which is why we're talking about how we need to have the Senate Oversight Committee also do a thorough uh, hearing on this particular process to take over. I also want to thank everyone involved. I want to thank the teachers, the parents, the students, the supporters, the administration that are doing the hard work because we right. know it's hard. We know this is challenging. We know this is embarrassing. We don't want to do this. And yet we also want to recognize the work, the hard work, good, great great work that is being done. And to those who think that this is too much, we shouldn't go about it this way. This is over the hill. We're not being, you know, this is not the best way to go. We shouldn't be doing this. Understand that in dismantling racism and white supremacy, there's no room for moderation. You definitely need to go to these measures so that we can have that peace, so that we can talk about the good and the great that's going on with PTSD, because there will be no room for what we're hearing about for us to be gathered here today. So I hope in the future we're gathering on much more positive aspects of PPSD and not the situation. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Anyone else have anything else to say? No, I mean, I'll just say since, unfortunately, since the inception of the takeover, we've seen a lack of transparency as it relates to day-to-day -day operations, the hiring process, and most importantly, just policy procedures in terms of what is being presented to, again, our youth. And I say that in regards to the concerns I'm hearing specifically from educators, but most importantly, the families and students that are, I represent. And so I think we are at a turning point where we've had some Senate oversight hearings. And unfortunately, when we have those Senate oversight hearings, we tend to walk away with more questions and more frustration based on how those hearings presented. So what we see here is a coalition of, again, community members who have been deeply involved with PTSD over the years, and again, are calling for putting us on a pathway of finally ending this takeover, where we haven't seen the progress that was promised, that was suggested. We haven't seen advocacy from RIDE as it relates to reforming the educational funding formula, which we should have done a decade ago. So at this point in time, this is, again, a result of issues that the community has continuously brought up. So in other words, a lot of what has been discussed is not new. But the tipping point, unfortunately, became the letter that we saw a week and a half ago that highlighted the practices that we had been hearing on the ground that had finally been highlighted in a way that finally generated the attention it deserves. So I just want to thank, again, all the community members on the ground, but most importantly, the educators and the parents and the families who have had to overcome some of the challenges that the takeovers presented over the last year and a half, two years. And again, the fact that we don't have a transparent process in terms of what is happening within our schools. Thank you. Thank you. So we want to thank all of you. We are available for, in, for um, individual questions if you have any. And y'all have a good morning. It's cold out here. It's cold. <laughs> if we can take a question. Um, sure. Senator Lucas, like you said yesterday, that it's pretty unlikely there would be an oversight hearing before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And he's not sure whether one would occur at all. Where do you go from here if, if, if he's not committing to a hearing? Where do you go from here? Anybody want to take that one? Absolutely. I think that the school board sort of stepping in, and I can't speak on behalf of the school board, I'm just a member. The school board stepping in uh, and definitely taking on the matter. I think that us holding the superintendent accountable for the recommendations that we have given him, I think that that is sort of the route that I go as a board member. And I sort of expect that the community also will continue to support the school board, but not only the school board, the community and the administrators as it pertains to the letter that was sent out. So maybe there'll be oversight hearing, if not in January, most likely. But from here, what we do is we make sure that we get the community to show up, show up at board meetings, reach out. Our legislators are ready to come back from session. Reach out to our, our legislators, making sure that we're able to hold the commissioner accountable. Because the state takeover has been a mess. It's unfortunate. It's been at an all-time low. The district has never been like this before. So with that, with the fact of the matter of that, we need to make sure that we hold her accountable, making sure that there is accountability across the board. So, what would you like Governor McKee to do? You could put that into what are the action items that you want Governor McKee to do sooner rather than later? I would like him to support what we already asked in this press conference. That's really ultimately. What our demands are is we want him to support that and what he can do within his power to make it happen. 
what are what are those things that we should do? Okay, so we said again, supporting the remove of the removal of the powers of the commissioner, right. having the independent investigation, himself calling for the Senate Oversight Committee to have a hearing on yeah. it. Yeah. Um, again, in terms of him also advocating for the removal of the senior advisor, all the stuff that we said in terms of our demands, we want him to support, we want him to use his powers with it to make it happen as well, what he can do with his power. Right. Anyone else? Y'all so quiet? Yeah. <laughs> Are y'all frozen? Get us now. <laughs> Get us now. I, I think it's so important that we understand the investigation of the, of the process. At the end, at the end of the day, there is no room for racism. There is none, no wiggle room at all. When you see it, call it out. And anytime somebody says, I don't care who they are and what position they hold, if somebody says an anonymous letter does not deserve or should not be read, and they are going to ignore it, you're ignoring the problem. And if you're ignoring the problem, then my question is, are you part of the problem? Exactly. Because if there's nothing to hide, addressing what was in that letter should not be hard. And, 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 go ahead. and to just be clear, because I know someone may say, well, you know, the superintendent is a person of color, the commissioner is a person of color. Black and brown folks are also capable of perpetuating racism and white supremacy. Say so that twice. The, the, uh, people of color, black people, brown people are also <laughs> capable of being racist, of engaging in racist practices and behaviors and perpetuating racism and white supremacy. So that being said, we got to go into what are the behaviors, what's been said, what's been done, and are you doing something about it or are you allowing it to continue? And if you're allowing it to continue, you are part of that racist behavior. Mm -hmm. And I continue to hear sort of the administration saying a lot of like staff members or staff members that may have written a letter has not come forth. The reason why is because the district doesn't have a strong whistleblowing policy. So we need to also create a better whistleblowing policy, right. which I in fact plan on advocating for. Right. But the fact of the matter is no one's going to come forth and say anything. That's the reason why it was anonymous. If that wasn't the case, they would have said something already. But because there's not a strong whistleblowing policy, they're stepping back, but they sent out the letter, and it's our job to make sure as, as a, community, a community that right. we step up and advocate for that. And right. so that also is leading to what we're seeing here. Intimidation is real. Retaliation is real. Right. And so within all of this, that's also what's going on here at BPSC that we need to address right. as well. Yeah. If we're talking about having open door policy, openness, and really engagement and inclusion, you, there's no room for someone or persons to have the right and loudest letter. They should have been able to go into that office mm -hmm. to have that discussion, to have be open, and and have no fear of retribution. So that's also a culture we need to address here as well. Right, right. We need to protect our black and brown children, most most of all. Um, we, we understand Rhode Island have a huge history of racism in the school department. So yeah, we need to address it strongly and advocate. And with that being said, we did you have a question about that? Yes, with regard to the school funding formula, which I think is universally loathed, um, ha have you been in touch, any of you, with uh, House Finance Chairman Abney or Speaker Sikarchi on that? So I will say, one thing that is promising is uh, back in mid-October when agencies were required to submit their budget proposal to Governor McKee, Ride did include reforming what the measurement of poverty is specifically in a way that would help further benefit the urban core, that being Kentucky, Providence, and Central Falls. However, a lot of this is not firm until we see the January budget proposal. I do have the goal of meeting with the respective Chairman Abney in addition to the House Speaker in terms of having a longer discussion of how we ensure that the January budget proposal, but most importantly, the budget that we passed in June, incorporates an actual comprehensive reform for the funding formula. So we're further taking into account our English language learners, fully funding special education, in addition to higher reimbursements for transportation needs. Representative, just one follow-up. Do you find irony in the fact that a lot of the suburban school districts are screaming about the unfairness of the funding formula? Absolutely. However, when they tend to screen that level of unfairness, it seems to get garner more attention than when you have a decade's worth of community members right. in the urban core demanding that we finally reform the funding formula. And also, I'm mindful of the fact that even in the suburban predominantly white, wealthy well, will to do. So of course, we're seeing that showing up here for racism, rights, and privacy, and exclusion.
again, if, 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 if I can add, uh, I don't want my, my mask to be construed uh, as me being silent coming here today. I want everybody to know, uh, as president-elect of the NAACP, uh, I stand with my brothers and sisters. I echo their sentiments, the sentiments of the community. We understand that the kids are first and foremost. Um, the teachers are constantly around them, and with them, so we should strongly support uh, those efforts. But we have the NAACP not stand, we will not tolerate racism on any level at any time. And as soon as we hear about it, as soon as we see it, we will step up and we will speak against it. We will vigorously and vehemently fight against it in Providence, Rhode Island, and anywhere that we see it. So I didn't want to come here and not be on a record and, and let the public know that the Providence branch of the NAACP stands with you all with regards uh, to racism and many other issues. Unrelated question related to the larger issue. While we have all of you here, right now a lawsuit has been filed uh, by an organization regarding the uh, Rhode Island Foundation funded mm -hmm. Teachers of Color yeah. loan yeah. Uh, program, if yeah. you will. Yeah. Um, any comment on that? I agree. Because the one thing we were talking about, this man's racism, you also came to exclusion. Yep. You can't. So when I heard about that report, it came out, and I said, yeah, I absolutely agree with that. You need to find the other way to close equity gaps, but you can't do it using the very same exclusion that excluded the people in, like around in the first place. You have to find a different way to close those gaps. So I am like, yes, we need to find another way of how do we close those gaps when it comes to student loans, but that was what the way right. they were set up is on the I'm sorry, Mr. Jaskar. Yeah. I was saying they need to be here at these press conferences. They need to be here at these meetings, at these uh, parent meetings. And this is why we have that gap. So, and we talk about assembling and deassembling racism in the institution of uh, education. So, it plays a huge role in what we're here for. Did you guys invite any Providence school officials to this meeting today? I sent my email to everybody, honey. I emailed folks that I ain't seen and heard from in years. <laughs> I believe there was an email sent. There was an email sent out to all of the administration yeah. prior to today's meeting. Yeah. I was informed and I did see. So everyone was aware. If anyone wanted to come, they would. But due to retaliation, you're not going to get it. Right. Right. And, and, and this is the racism that we talk about. That's that's being excluded there. This is a problem we have in education. And at the end of the day, the bottom line is, I have yet to hear a child or their parent say, since the takeover, my child has received the best education ever since the Providence takeover. I've yet to hear a child say that they are learning more than they've ever learned before. I have yet to see a parent, especially a black and brown parent, mm -hmm. say, I know exactly what is going on in my child's school. I'm not saying that they're not out there, I'm just saying I've never seen them. And we're going on year four. So what's going on? It didn't look good. Year, year one looked cute. Year two, you had a little question. And by year three, you were totally confused. And now here we are going into year four. This is a problem. And I'm sorry if this was in Burrowville or Barrington, we wouldn't even be here because it would have been addressed as soon as someone saw an issue. So why is it taking so long here? And with that, we are done. Yay.